Again, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. And for those of you who are new to this channel, I welcome you and uh, just want to give you an idea of what this channel is about. Uh, and also, those of you who have been longtime subscribers or brand new subscribers, I just want to let you guys know I am very, very grateful for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, I want to talk to you guys today about something that happened to me um, about 10 years ago that changed my perspective on a lot of things. As you guys know, part of what I do is um, paranormal investigations. Um, you know, call me crazy. It's just something that I have a really strong interest in. And over the years, I've learned so much. I've studied so much. I've taught so much. And I have a grounded understanding of how these things work. Um, but this job in particular that we were on, um, we laid all the ground rules down, you know, Part of it is you don't we don't say each other's names. They don't even know my name. They don't even know the people on my team. They don't even know who I'm bringing to their house um, during the investigation. Now, part of what we do during an investigation, we take pictures, we do EVPs. And for those of you who are unfamiliar uh, with EVPs, basically an EVP is when you take a recording device and you hit play. You can even record it you know, uh, in, in the form of a video, but your point, your purpose is to lay the device down on a flat surface and hopefully it's quiet as possible. And a lot of times, majority of times you will pick up certain sounds. You will pick up, uh, sounds from, let's just say from another world, not this physical world, obviously. So there's a, there's a method to that kind of EV, EVP madness, which I'm not going to go into during this video because it's story time. <laughs> well, these people had asked me to do a walkthrough in their house. And um, they didn't know me. They heard about me. They kind of knew my first name, uh, which is something I wish they didn't know. <laughs> but they knew my first name and they knew uh, some some of the things about my reputation. And uh, so anyway, they asked me if I would come and do an investigation at their house. And they had lived in the house I think maybe five years at that time. So I brought my crew along and um, because this house had re a lot of heavy, heavy energy reported, full uh, bodied apparitions seen throughout the house, uh, certain things that would suggest uh, possible poltergeist activities. Um, so we sort of approached this particular walkthrough just like we would any walkthrough, neutral. Even though these things were reported to us, we have to sort of approach it neutral in order to get the best, uh, most real answers possible as to what's going on in these people's homes. Uh, as I said, it was a team of three, uh, myself and two other people, we came into the home and I immediately felt nothing. I didn't feel anything. The people that were with me, uh, as we sort of maneuvered our way throughout the home, they began to feel, uh, you know, some, something, you know, they, it was, they couldn't describe it. Uh, one of the people, uh, described, there was a small bedroom that had a closet. Um, and when we opened the closet, one of my team members felt that that could possibly have been a vortex, you know, a way in, a way out for these entities. But the first 20 minutes of being in this house, I didn't feel anything. I didn't really know what to tell these homeowners because I didn't feel anything. And I thought, well, we'll probably have to come back. Well, one of my team members pulled me to the side and she kind of gave me a little bit of a nudge and I understood what that meant, which I'm not going to go <laughs> go into here. She gave me a sign that we were being uh, observed and I still didn't feel anything. So the homeowner 
explained to us that in her bedroom, she would always see this woman at sort of at the foot of her bed. And, uh, you know, it would happen over and over again. So we went into that room. I still didn't, <laughs> I still didn't feel anything. I just didn't feel any energy. But the two people who were with me, they were nodding to me that they felt the spirit was around us. I didn't feel it. So she gave us a tour to the lower level of the house, to the basement. And that part of the house, I began to get um, some intuitive vibrations that there was some residual energy in that area of the house. So then we came back up the stairs and then it was almost as if we caught somebody off guard. Like they, when we first got in the house, I think they were keeping sort of standing away from us. Although the two people who were with me could sense their presence, I honestly could not. Um, and then when we came back up the stairs, I began to feel that they were on us. I could feel it. It was very clear. And then the homeowner kind of looked at us and kind of made a, you know, a gesture with her head and kind of gave us a look you know, an expression like, okay, do you feel that? And of course we did feel it, all three of us. And this entity was curious why we were there. Um, and once again, you guys, I do use certain mechanisms of protection, which I'm not going to get into during this video. Uh, so I did feel confident that I could continue the walkthrough. Um, then we began to sit uh, at the dining room table and one of the visitors to the house, who was a male, um, he began to explain to uh, some of the things that he had personally witnessed. I think he lived next door and he could see certain things through his um, I think he said it was his bedroom window. He could kind of see into their kitchen and he'd seen a lot of things going on. Uh, not a lot of things. I'm sorry. He said he saw a few things going on in the house. Um, so we, you know, began to discuss the things going on in the house, which is something I really, I don't particularly like doing that. But for the sake of time, we really at that point had, had no choice. We, f we felt like we needed to talk about it and we needed to talk about it ASAP. At that time, the person on our team began to feel sensations that indicated to her that one of these entities was trying to attach. So she got up and she left the house. Um, and then the man who lived next door, he got up and he went with her. And uh, we continued uh, talking about uh, certain things that they had sensed in the house. And then I got this overwhelming feeling, it's, <laughs> it's time to go. This is starting to feel strange. This is starting to feel like something that I can't personally help them with. So the person from the team came back inside and we agreed it was time to leave. We had really gathered a lot of evidence. We had done EVPs. We had taken pictures. We had done interviews. We had uh, taken excellent notes. So then it was time to go to leave the house and to sort of put our heads together along with the evidence and figure out how we could help the homeowner. In this particular case, we, we kind of knew before we even put the evidence together, we kind of knew uh, that there were some entities in that house that we personally were not experienced enough to deal with. We knew just enough uh, to explain to the homeowners that we could refer them to uh, someone else because we don't deal with um, those types of entities, the types of uh, sort of poltergeists. Um, and some people would even consider bad entities. Um, so when we were on our way, uh, when we were leaving the house, we were probably a good mm, mile away. And then one of the homeowner called her cell phone and she asked what our names were. And, uh, well, she already knew my name. And so I told her that, you know, the team members names because we were finished with the investigation. There was, there was no reason uh, to, to not disclose that at that point. And she said, wait, before you tell me, is her name, you know, blah, blah, blah. She had no idea what the team members name was. Uh, it's a very, very unusual name. It's a name that was, 
uh, sort of made up just for her. So she had no way of figuring out what her name was. And that was just a confirmation to us that this entity had a lot of energy that we personally weren't uh, capable or interested in uh, pursuing. Uh, so we referred them to someone else. But yeah, that particular investigation taught me a lot. Uh, it taught me how real these things can be. Um, but if there's anyone out there that is experiencing any kind of maybe uh, unusual activity, whether you're seeing full-bodied apparitions, whether you have movement of objects uh, in the physical world, or... Um, you know, you have a lot of chaos going on in your house. The best thing to do, instead of going out and getting sage and, and burning candles and putting salt out, first you have to find out what you have, what you're dealing with. And if you can find a good investigator, they can clean your house and you can f be free of these annoyances. Now, if you think you have something heavier than, uh, you know, uh, quote unquote ghosts or little lost spirits here and there, then you, you probably, you know, I, I probably a good start would be a good investigator, um, a psychic investigator, someone that is a medium, someone that is clairvoyant that can help you resolve these issues. So I hope I didn't overwhelm you guys too much, but in light of it being Halloween, I thought I'd give you guys a little bit of scary story. So, I'm sending you guys love and light and I'm hoping and wishing all is well with each and every one of you. Remember, love begins with you, positivity begins with you. Don't worry about what other people are doing. If they want to be negative, if they want to cut you off in traffic, if they want to be rude to you at the checkout counter and throw your change to you, if they want to act the way they want to act, that's on them. It has nothing to do with you. It is always about them. So stay still in your peace and in your love. This is tomorrow again, wishing you guys the best of the best. Thanks.